Welcome to Sinister Stories. Are you prepared to step into the realm of the mysterious and uncanny? Embark with us on an odyssey through the dimly lit alleys of the enigmatic, where chilling narratives await. Within this obscure corner of the digital expanse, we plunge into the abyss of awe and trepidation, crafting stories that will leave you spellbound. Anticipate being captivated by meticulously woven tales, each one a descent into the core of enigma and dread. From spectral abodes to age-old enigmas, our narratives will transport you to domains where the boundary between actuality and the supernatural fades. Whether you're an aficionado of thrill, an enthusiast of the uncanny, or merely someone with an unquenchable thirst for the uncharted, you've discovered your haven. Enroll now and become a part of our fellowship of dauntless adventurers, poised to unravel the riddles of the shadowed. Dim the lights, don your headphones, and allow the tales of sinister stories to entwine themselves around your imagination. Together, we shall navigate the labyrinth of the inexplicable, uncovering tales that will linger long after the screen fades to obscurity. Do not let this opportunity pass you by, press that subscribe button and join us on this sojourn into the depths of the enigmatic and uncanny. Hunting Season In the heart of the countryside, nestled within an obscure enclave untouched by the passage of time, the Hendersons held sway. Their dwelling, a facade of normality, belied the darkness that coursed through their veins, a legacy etched in blood and malevolence, handed down through generations like a cursed heirloom. The world beyond knew them only as a family, their countenances exuding a charm that masked the sinister truth that dwelled beneath. To the unsuspecting eye, they were hospitable hosts, inviting travelers to their door with smiles as beguiling as they were treacherous. Yet behind the veneer of hospitality lurked a predatory hunger that yearned for the screams of the lost and the taste of raw terror. With the onset of summer, the Hendersons' true nature unfurled. Their hunting season, a ghastly ritual steeped in macabre tradition, commenced with the languid rise of the sun. Weary travelers, drawn by the siren call of the farmhouse, found themselves ensnared by the family's feigned benevolence. Unbeknownst to them, they were now unwitting pawns in a game whose stakes were their very lives. Under the shroud of night, the Hendersons cast off their masks of civility, revealing the twisted malevolence that lay beneath. Released onto the sprawling expanse of their property, the captives were thrust into a predatory ballet. The family, armed with weapons that gleamed with sinister intent, pursued their quarry with a chilling precision, the very air pregnant with the scent of dread. Each step taken was a heartbeat in a symphony of terror that echoed through the hollows of the night. Over the centuries, the Hendersons had refined their craft to a wicked art, achieving an almost supernatural mastery in the pursuit of their prey. Some, lured by the futile promise of escape, dared to flee, their breath rasping and hearts pounding. Yet, against the backdrop of the night, the family's dominion over the land proved absolute, and the tendrils of darkness closed in, leaving the desperate souls cornered, their cries swallowed by the insatiable maw of the remorseless. And so, the grotesque banquet followed, a twisted communion that celebrated the family's monstrous desires. The flesh of victims, tender and crimson, became the centerpiece of this ghastly feast, consumed with a fervor that bordered on religious ecstasy. In the flickering light of the farmhouse, shadows danced to the macabre rhythm of their abominable traditions. The night clung to the Henderson farmhouse like a shroud, its secrets buried beneath layers of darkness. Within its walls, the air hung heavy with the scent of aged wood and foreboding. As the moon cast its pale glow over the land, two souls, Jack and Emily, wandered into the maw of this malevolent sanctuary, their laughter echoing in the stillness, unaware of the harrowing fate that awaited them. Emily's eyes sparkled with the promise of reuniting with family, her heart aflutter with anticipation. The soft rustle of leaves beneath her feet seemed to serenade her steps, while the moonbeams danced through the canopy, casting enchanting patterns upon the path ahead. Beside her, Jack's gaze held a steady warmth, his hand entwined with hers, their fingers interlaced as if woven by fate itself. 
Their footsteps echoed through the corridor of ancient trees, guiding them towards the looming presence of the Henderson's farmhouse. Shadows seemed to play tricks on their senses, whispering secrets they dared not comprehend. The night birds sang a mournful chorus, their lamentations weaving into the fabric of the evening. As they approached, the farmhouse stood as a sentinel, its windows gazing out like eyes that had borne witness to countless horrors. The wooden planks, weathered and worn, creaked beneath their feet, echoing a somber welcome. The front door groaned open, revealing a yawning maw of darkness, a threshold into a world both familiar and alien. Inside, the air was thick with the scent of aged wood and memories long forgotten. The flickering light of lanterns danced along the walls, casting ephemeral shapes that seemed to breathe with a life of their own. The creak of floorboards echoed through the halls, as if the very foundation of the house held secrets it yearned to share. The Hendersons, their faces a mask of congeniality, welcomed the unsuspecting guests with open arms. Their voices were honeyed, dripping with false kindness, concealing the malevolence that simmered just beneath the surface. With practice grace, they ushered Jack and Emily into their luxurious accommodations, the rooms adorned with opulent tapestries and antique furniture, a stark contrast to the darkness that lay beyond the walls. As the night unfurled its inky wings, Jack and Emily's laughter turned to hushed whispers. A subtle unease settled over them, a disquiet that tugged at the edges of their consciousness. They shared stolen glances, a silent acknowledgement of the foreboding atmosphere that enveloped them. Little did they know, within the heart of this tranquil façade, a malevolent ritual was poised to begin. The Hendersons, masters of deception, had set their stage, ready to unleash the horrors that lurked within their twisted souls. And in the veil of night, as the moon bore witness, the couple would become prisoners in a macabre theater, their fates bound to a darkness they could not fathom. In the quivering shadows of the Henderson's malevolent realm, a palpable unease hung in the air, as if the very fabric of the night held its breath. The family, so accustomed to the rhythmic dance of predator and prey, found themselves thrust into an unfamiliar tableau. Jack and Emily, two mere mortals, now stood as the architects of their own salvation, wielding weapons forged from desperation and steely determination. The very earth beneath them seemed to pulse with an undercurrent of anticipation, as though it sensed the seismic shift in power. The farmhouse, once a fortress of impunity, now groaned and creaked under the weight of impending reckoning, its timbers bearing witness to the unfolding drama. The Hendersons, their once confident strides now marked by hesitation, exchanged furtive glances that betrayed the fissures in their collective façade. Their weapons, once wielded with a cruel and calculated precision, now trembled in unsteady hands. The air crackled with a sense of foreboding, as if the malevolent spirits of the past rose in silent solidarity with Jack and Emily, urging them onward. In that hallowed moment, the very laws of nature seemed to blur and waver. The hunted had become the hunters, their instincts sharp, honed by a desperate desire for retribution. Each step, each breath, reverberated with a newfound purpose, a declaration of sovereignty over the realm of darkness. The farmhouse, once a bastion of their depravity, now echoed with the discordant symphony of conflict. Walls that had borne witness to unspeakable horrors now bore the scars of the struggle, each mark a testament to the inexorable will of those who refused to yield. As the clash of steel and bone resounded, a chorus of anguished cries mingled with the defiant roars of the living. It was a dance of defiance and desperation, a tapestry woven from the very essence of survival. The line between predator and prey blurred, the distinction reduced to a mere illusion, shattered by the force of Jack and Emily's unleashed fury. In the heart of this tempestuous battleground, hope flickered like a fragile flame. The very ground seemed to tremble in recognition of the extraordinary, the extraordinary that emerged when the human spirit refused to be shackled by the darkness that sought to consume it. As the moon dipped low on the horizon, its pale light casting long, ethereal shadows, the balance of power teetered on the precipice of transformation. 
The Hendersons, once masters of malevolence, now found themselves ensnared in the tendrils of their own maleficent design. The world watched with bated breath, for in this harrowing crucible, justice and vengeance wove their intricate dance, seeking to reclaim the stolen light from the depths of the abyss. In the heart of that interminable night, as the moon hung low and shadows wove intricate patterns upon the earth, a spectral symphony of long-forgotten souls began its melancholic overture. The restless spirits, bound by the cruel legacy of the Hendersons, stirred in the inky abyss, their ethereal presence an unseen current coursing through the very air. With each breath, they whispered secrets of ancient suffering, their voices a mournful chorus that echoed through the haunted corridors of the farmhouse. Their anguished pleas were woven into the very fabric of the night, a desperate lament for justice long denied. Phantom hands, cool as the touch of moonlight, reached out from the veil of the beyond, caressing the shoulders of Jack and Emily, fingers brushing against sweat-slicked skin. They were not alone in this battle, for the souls of the forsaken stood sentinel, their collective will a force beyond mortal reckoning. Through the whispered words of the departed, Jack and Emily felt an otherworldly guidance, an urging that emanated from the depths of an ageless sorrow. The spirit spoke in a language of longing and retribution, their messages woven into the very sinews of the living, infusing them with a spectral determination. As the night pressed on, the spectral congregation swelled, a legion of vengeful phantoms swathed in moonlight and sorrow. They swirled around the beleaguered couple, their presence a shield against the encroaching darkness. In the hollows of their eyes, there burned a fiery resolve, a testament to the enduring strength of those who had suffered and been wronged. With every step, every strike against the malevolent family, the spirits surged forward, a symphony of retribution that reverberated through the farmhouse. The walls, once silent witnesses to unspeakable horrors, now bore witness to a spectral uprising, a reckoning that transcended the mortal realm. Through the interplay of the living and the departed, a dance of justice and vengeance unfurled, blurring the boundaries between the corporeal and the ethereal. The sins of the past, etched into the very stones of the farmhouse, were met with an unyielding force, a force born of souls long denied their peace. In that hallowed night, the spirits of the forsaken found their voice, and with it, they wove a tapestry of redemption and release. Their presence, a testament to the resilience of the human spirit, ensured that the legacy of the Hendersons would forever be tainted by the shadows of the wronged. As the first tendrils of dawn unfurled, casting a spectral glow over the Hendersons' blighted domain, the air hung heavy with the weight of impending reckoning. The farmhouse, once a fortress of malevolence, now quivered with each defiant blow struck by Jack and Emily. The walls, once silent witnesses to unspeakable horrors, seemed to groan and creak in protest, as if mourning the inevitable demise of their vile custodians. Shadows danced in frantic patterns, their ethereal forms stirred by the tempest of unleashed fury that now surged through the desecrated halls. With each swing of their weapons, the couple seemed to channel the spirits of all who had fallen before them. It was as though the very essence of the forsaken victims, long silenced in death, pulsed through their veins, guiding their hands with a chilling precision. Every strike echoed with a resonance that transcended the physical, a symphony of retribution that resonated in the marrow of the earth itself. The air crackled with the scent of desperation, mingling with the acrid tang of blood and sweat. Jack's breath, ragged and labored, seemed to harmonize with the staccato rhythm of Emily's determined onslaught. They moved in a grim ballet, a dance of survival and vengeance, every step a testament to the indomitable will that thrived even in the face of unspeakable horrors. In the heart of the battlefield, the Hendersons' once imposing presence now waned, their malevolent facade stripped away like brittle leaves in the autumn wind. Their movements, once predatory and assured, now betrayed the flickers of fear that danced behind their eyes. The family that had reveled in terror now tasted the bitter venom of their own creation. As the crescendo of their assault reached its zenith, the very foundations of the farmhouse seemed to quake. Dust and debris rained down like a storm of retribution, 
as if the very heavens themselves bore witness to the cataclysmic battle. Each impact reverberated through the time-worn structure, a requiem for the malevolence that had festered within its walls. And then, in a final, shattering crescendo, the last vestiges of the Henderson's dominion crumbled. The echoes of their reign of terror faded into the cold morning air, leaving behind a silence that hung heavy with the weight of finality. Jack and Emily, bloodied but unbowed, stood amidst the wreckage, their eyes alight with the fire of triumph. The land, once held captive by the family's insidious legacy, seemed to exhale a collective sigh of relief. The trees swayed in a gentle cadence, as if offering a benediction to the brave souls who had dared to defy the darkness. The echoes of their victory would reverberate through the ages, a testament to the enduring power of the human spirit in the face of unimaginable horrors. The first rays of dawn emerged like molten gold, casting an eerie radiance across the once accursed land. The air, heavy with the scent of blood and earth, seemed to hold its breath, as if in awe of the cataclysmic transformation that had unfolded under its watchful gaze. The remnants of the Henderson stronghold lay in shattered ruins, a testament to the fervent struggle that had played out within its walls. The time-worn stones, witnesses to unspeakable horrors, now bore the scars of retribution, their jagged edges a silent testament to the battle that raged through the night. Jack and Emily, their breaths ragged and labored, stood amidst the aftermath, their figures silhouetted against the burgeoning light. Their faces, etched with the weariness of the soul, bore the unmistakable imprint of survivors who had faced the abyss and emerged on the other side. The ground beneath their feet seemed to quiver, as if acknowledging the weight of the moment. The echoes of their triumph reverberated through the air, a haunting melody that seemed to emanate from the very earth itself. It was a song of defiance, a chorus of those who had stared into the abyss and refused to be consumed. Around them, the remnants of the malevolent family lay still, their reign of terror extinguished, their forms twisted and broken. The once formidable predators were now reduced to mere shadows, their power stripped away by the unyielding force of justice and vengeance. The wind, carrying with it the whispers of the fallen, seemed to caress the faces of the victors. It was a gentle touch, a final benediction from those who had longed for release from the shackles of their tormentors. In that moment, the boundary between the living and the departed blurred, as if the spirits themselves had come to bear witness to the culmination of their shared struggle. As the final vestiges of darkness gave way to the burgeoning light, Jack and Emily turned to face the horizon. Their eyes, once clouded with fear, now shone with a fierce determination. They were the architects of their own salvation, the embodiment of a resolute spirit that refused to be broken. The land, once tainted by the malevolence that had festered within its depths, now seemed to breathe a sigh of relief. The trees whispered their gratitude, their leaves rustling in a gentle chorus of approval. The very earth itself seemed to exhale, as if expelling the lingering remnants of a malevolent presence. In that hallowed moment, the sins of the past were etched into the annals of time, a cautionary tale that would be passed down through the ages. The Hendersons, once lords of darkness, were now naught but a footnote in the chronicles of the Forsaken. As Jack and Emily turned away from the remnants of the farmhouse, they carried with them the weight of their harrowing journey. They were not unscathed, for the scars of such trials run deep. Yet, they walked forward, their steps imbued with a newfound purpose, a promise to honor the memory of those who had fallen. And so, as the sun ascended to its rightful throne in the sky, illuminating a world forever changed, Jack and Emily ventured forth, the living embodiment of a truth etched in the annals of time, that even in the darkest of nights, there exists a spark of light, a beacon of hope, and a strength that can overcome the most malevolent of adversaries. Thank you for joining us on this spine-tingling journey through the realms of darkness and dread. If you felt the chill down your spine and the thrill of the unknown, don't forget to show your support. Hit that like button if you've been captivated, and share your thoughts in the comments below. Your feedback fuels the fire that keeps our sinister stories burning bright.
Remember to subscribe and ring the notification bell to never miss an episode. More hair-raising tales are waiting to claw their way into your imagination, and we wouldn't want you to miss a single one. Have a chilling idea of your own? We'd love to hear it. Submit your own scary story concepts to our channel for a chance to see your idea come to life in a future episode. Together, we'll continue to unearth the most sinister tales the darkness has to offer. Until next time, remember to keep your wits about you, for the shadows hold secrets that only the bravest dare to discover. Stay curious, stay brave, and always embrace the sinister. Thank you for being a part of the Sinister Stories community.